we have finally upgraded our Keyens optical microscope. Now we have the VHX 970, where before we had the VHX 600. So I'm just gonna show you how to use the new system. It's pretty similar to the old system. So if you're familiar with the old system, you should be highly competent on this new system. Happy to help though if you have any issues. We have two stages for this. We have a manual stage and this holds our Z00, Z20, and Z100 lenses. Um, not our highest mag lens, which is the Z500. So the three low mag lens can go on this manual stage and the high mag lens, which is 500 to 5000 X, needs to go on this automatic stage. Automatic only meaning that it can move automatically in the Z direction, but not in X and Y. It's still a manual X, Y stage. The component differences between our VHX 600 and the VHX 970 are the computer, the console, and the camera. So the computer is obviously this part. The console is this part with the clicky button, and the camera is here, and this will collect the images. It is a much higher resolution camera than the other one on the 600. The power button is right here on the monitor. The computer should already be on, so just the monitor needs to turn on. When the software starts up, there will be this pop-up with lens settings. And you want to choose your lens power that you're going to be working at. You can change this, so it, it doesn't really matter what you put here right now. But I'm on 1000x right now, so I will choose 1000x and OK. So now you can see that 1000x has gone down into the bottom right corner where it says, says lens. Um, so now we have a thousand X and our scale bar will match. Like the 600, it does not read the magnification automatically as of right now. Um, so you do have to make sure that you manually put in your magnification anytime you change it so that your scale bar will be correct. Okay, so we have our, our options over here on the right hand side. The first one is lighting and brightness. The epi illumination that's listed at the top, that's coming out of the camera. And for any of the lenses that have this lighting unit on the side, we don't want to use that camera lighting. So I'm going to turn it off by clicking this on button that's currently yellow. Now the screen goes, goes dark. Um, and I want to turn the lighting unit on. The lighting unit is mounted in the back. It's a separate piece. And then this fiber optic cable transmits the light into this set of mirrors. So we'll turn on the lighting unit. Both of these lights, when they're on, are very bright. So if you're removing them to switch them to anything else, it's best to turn them off or at least face them away from yourself and other people because they are extremely bright. So when you turn the lighting on, you can then put your sample under the lens. And you could focus manually like you probably did before using the coarse focus and fine focus. Or you can turn on the measurement unit control, which you may have done before. That turns on the motors. Make sure you remove your sample while it's initializing so that it doesn't hit. It does it twice, so be patient. Okay. So now we're able to control the z-axis through the software. Um, we can use the console to do that. There's two knobs over here on the left-hand side. The bigger one is the coarse focus, and the smaller one is the fine focus. Do note though, these are motor steps, and since the motor steps are not that small, you're going to get greater control if you use the continuous focus knobs. If you just want a teeny tiny bit of adjustment on the fine focus, it will be better to use the knobs on the machine rather than on the console. But to get close to where you're going, the ones on the console will be very helpful. Now this is only for the automatic stage, remember. If you're on the manual stage, you need to focus fully 
using the dials on the side of the stage itself. Got two points. And you can drag up and down to put the number wherever you want it. If you want to show the measurement result window, like it automatically popped up on the 600, if you check the measurement result window box, that will pop up here. You can save that separately as a CSV. Or when you save, when you hit record here, you can also on the right hand side save the measure CSV. So you can do it all at once. You can delete them all here. And you can go back out of the, the measurement window. Scale is also in the measure window. It'll check your magnification again. And you have the same options as you did in the 600. We've got mesh, cross, bar, and XY bar. Um, important in this increased image quality window is to optimize. In the VHX 600, we had four options when you hit optimize. For this VHX 970, we have nine options that pop up, and it'll tell you what each of them are. So in this little window, if you hover over, the, the mouse over text will tell you what it's doing to that image. So top left is normal mode, the next one is normal light plus light shift, etc. And then same as the other one, you just double click on your favorite one. You can either do that in these mini images or you can do that on the screen itself. So say I like this one the best, that's glare removal plus light shift. I can double click on this image here. The next option is depth up. Now this will only work on this automatic stage. So it'll only work for the Z500 lens, the 500 to 5000 X. If you want a 3D representation or a, an extended depth of field, EDF as it's called on the other microscopes, um, we can go to the fine depth composition. So if you can see right now, not everything is quite in focus. Let's actually go out a little bit, make sure to change the magnification. So not everything is in focus at the same plane. So let's try to get it all in focus. Into the fine depth composition. Then go to settings to set the two positions, top and bottom, that you want to scan over. Make sure you're on lower to upper limit. Turning the knob on the lens holder part away from you is up and towards you is down. So make sure you have the upper and lower limit set correctly. It's not going to switch them for you if you mess it up. So for upper, we're going to turn away from us. So that's the upper limit. And then pull towards for the lower limit. And you can pass the lower limit, that's fine. So we've set upper and set lower. When those are set, you can close this pop-up and then start capture. Pretty much everything that you can do on the console, you can also do in the software, but this may be a nice little shortcut. Um, so as I mentioned, these two knobs, the big and small, are the coarse and fine focus. Across the top here, we have a scale bar. You can add and remove the scale bar. Anti-vibration, you can turn it on and off. Split screen, you can rotate through the options for the split screen. Go back to full screen with full screen. Um, and you can do a one-shot composition. We have remove reflection, which is like that halation removal. It'll take away shiny spots. Measurement will open your 2D measurement window. Optimize brings up those nine lighting conditions for you to choose from. Album brings up your file folders. Autofocus will execute autofocus if you are on that automatic lens. Depth composition in 3D brings up that menu. Record will record an image and open your file folder for saving. And pause is just pausing. It doesn't actually save anything. If you want to switch lenses, so if you want to go over to this manual stage from the automatic stage, you have to move the camera and the light. Same as before. 
So we move the camera by clicking down this little latch right here and then rotating the camera so that the solid white dots align, pulling straight up, moving the camera right over and doing the opposite, lining up the solid circles and then twisting until you hear a click and no further. Click and stop. Um, the light is similar, except you don't have any latches. You just pull it right out and you can see that's very bright. So don't look straight into that, as I mentioned. Slide that right in to its holder. If you're using a lens that doesn't have one of these side attachments for a fiber optic cable, then all you'll need to do is move the camera and the light comes from the camera itself. Okay, and so that's just like a pretty basic overview of the operation of the instrument. For your images, there's an album option, album window here. So you can just pop that open, find your files, and we'll be connected to the internet so you can transfer via the internet. Um, and we'll also be connected to the server for MMCL so you'll be able to transfer them that way.